Thanks for tuning in to KDRT 95.7 FM in Davis, California. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and today is Tuesday, January 26, 2021, and this is the COVID-19 Community Report. We're sharing local news and resources focusing on what's impacting Davis and nearby cities in Yolo County during the COVID-19 pandemic. My guest today is Lucas Frerichs, Vice Mayor for the City of Davis, and we'll get to that interview in just a few minutes. This particular episode finds me in a pensive mood. I'm actually in quarantine now after having been exposed by a sick family member. Everyone in our immediate household is fine and has tested negative, but someone in our pod was exposed and didn't know, and that's frequently how this virus spreads. I find myself very grateful for Healthy Davis Together and free, painless, saliva-based testing. Honestly, I find myself grateful, period. And there are many locally who perhaps can't say that. Yolo County posted its highest ever one day total of COVID-19 cases this week, as well as a record number of county residents hospitalized to date. According to the county's dashboards, last week, 45 county residents were hospitalized with COVID-19, including 15 in intensive care in the county's two hospitals. And on Wednesday alone, the county reported 298 new cases of the virus. That was a one-day total. Last week's new cases in Yolo County numbered 1,040, also record-breaking. For perspective, when I started reporting these numbers back in March, we were looking at an average of five to seven cases per day. The county also recorded seven more deaths, bringing the death toll in Yolo County to 138. Those deaths were in West Sacramento and Woodland, which are the cities in our county that have been most heavily impacted by the pandemic. The county did report some good news and some bad news on the COVID vaccination effort last week as well. And once again, I thank Yellow County's Public Information Officer Jenny Tan for her frequent updates and being a go-to resource during this time. Last Wednesday, the state advised counties and healthcare systems that they could resume use of a batch of Moderna vaccines that had been suspended following possible allergic reactions. Yolo County had received 1,700 vaccine doses from that Moderna lot in question, none of which had been administered. The county will now move ahead with administering those vaccines. Tan also said the county has received a total of about 7,100 vaccine doses, but those were all expected to be used by the end of last week, and it was not clear when the county would receive more. Uh, we'll, We'll update in future weeks. And finally, here's your testing information. Through the end of this month, January 30th, there's an OptumServe testing center available in a portable next to the juvenile detention center located at 2780 East Gibson Road in Woodland. Testing is by appointment only and can be made by calling 888-634-1123 or by completing an online application at lhi.care slash COVID testing. The county also continues its free Avellino testing sites through the end of the month. Participants must provide proof of county residency. There are a variety of testing times and locations and you can visit yolocounty.org for more info there. See the testing page located on the website. And finally, Healthy Davis Together offers free saliva test. If you're symptomatic, you can get tested on Mondays. Other days are reserved for testing of asymptomatic individuals. Appointments are recommended. Visit healthydavistogether.org to create an account and register. Although actually I was told that after you've had an initial test and are in the system, walk-ins are possible, doable, and easy. The whole process takes about 10 minutes. Joining me today is Davis's Vice Mayor, Lucas Frerichs, who was first elected to the Davis City Council in 2012, was re-elected in 2016, and again in 2020. He currently represents District 3. His civic engagement also includes service on boards ranging from the Sacramento Area Council of Governments, the Capital Corridor Joint Powers Authority, the Yolo County Transportation District, Yolo Habitat Conservancy, and Valley Clean Energy, many of which he has chaired over the years. 
As director of state policy for his day job with the Nature Conservancy, Lucas is responsible for advocating before the California state legislature and state agencies. And he was recently named as one of Sacramento Magazine's Sacramento 100, an honor bestowed on those making a difference in our region. Thank you so much for joining me, Lucas. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Autumn. I appreciate it. You know, you were actually my first interview on this show, episode one, back on March 17th, 2020. And today is episode 49, just FYI. And when we spoke in March, it was at the very beginning of things shutting down due to COVID. I know I had this real sense of urgency. What can I do? How can I help? And within four days, I was on the air with the, the first show of this, um, of this program. And you shared with me then the city's sense of urgency in getting a safety net under our community, particularly some of our more vulnerable members. I don't think either of us could have imagined 10 months ago what this time period would bring. And we had also yet to experience district elections. You've been through that. So thinking back over those long months, let's, uh, let's talk about some of the steps the city has taken during this time. What would you consider to be some of the best practices and success stories emerging from this pandemic period? Well, yeah, this, you know, no question that uh, 2020, or we'll say just the past year up through now, but the 20, you know, 2020 was quite an unorthodox <laughs> year, to say the least. Um, it, you know, certainly I would say the most challenging year um, since I started serving on the council um, about eight and a half years ago. Uh, and, you know, and, and during that time, actually, that when I first came onto the city council in 2012, that was sort of coming out of the depths of the Great Recession. Right. Uh, which was a really challenging time. So, you know, you see these cycles uh, sort of up and down, but um, this, uh, this sort of issue, the issues around the pandemic and with COVID are unlike anything I think the city has ever seen and in most governments for that matter. Um, you know, I think even having said that, I do think that there has been a fair amount of uh, really uh, positive sort of adaptation, <laughs> you know, has been pivoting and adaptation, right? That's the sure. real, I think, I uh, a key in the past a year, um, you know, moving all of our meetings to virtual uh, meetings, right? All city meetings, even a neighborhood meeting, you know, sort of that would normally be in person in some community building or in, in, in a neighborhood itself. All of that has been moved um, to, to Zoom and, uh, and, you know, and, and there's a lot of, there's a learning process, of course, with all of that, but it's in some ways it's interesting because now, I mean, there are, you know, on, on several council uh, items before the city council this past year, uh, we had uh, 130 public comments, 160 public comments recently, 160 public comments, you know, from members of the public that absolutely would not all have attended an in-person city council meeting. So, uh, you know, that ability, so there, there was a lot of questions about, well, how can, can, will people be able to participate? Right, right. <laughs> and, 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 they and, do. <laughs> and they do. Yeah, absolutely. So that is something that um, is just a, a real change and, but I think has been positive. Um, you know, I would say, Truly, the, the partnership and collaboration with UC Davis uh, on the Healthy Davis Together program, uh, <clears throat> that is something that is, uh, you know, there's been an increasing relationship of uh, partnership on a variety of items, but that is, this is just, I mean, sort of, uh, you know, far and away much larger than a lot of the items we've worked on with UC Davis. And so, so thankful for the partnership there. The, you know, the testing, obviously, for uh, members of our folks who are living in Davis, folks who work in Davis, um, that is such a huge, uh, been a huge asset. But also just the other components, the sort of uh, dealing with the downtown, you know, sort of the, the, the healthy Davis together ambassadors that sort of are roving around downtown, you know, farmers market, different places like that on campus, of course. Uh, you know, but also the the pivoting to having, you know, setting up the closing off some of the streets, setting up some of the outdoor dining in the parklets and things like that. I think that those are, you know, a real, it's a real um, shows that sort of the initiative and sort of how the city was able to really work together with, say, like downtown Davis or other business owners and things, and then just really sort of pivot and start to uh, sort of make the best of a, a not so great situation. Mm -hmm. So Healthy Davis Together is interesting. I want to comment on that for a minute because I've I've had cause to go get tested a few times myself lately after um, I was unfortunately and unintentionally exposed and I'm fine. And But I'm so grateful for the whole 
process, how easy it is, totally painless, how little time it takes and how quickly, um, you know, we get results. I have my results in about 28 hours after I got tested, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, and I, and I do think during a time of crisis, as we've seen elsewhere in the country, uh, people and entities, they either go towards divisiveness or they find ways to work together. And I do think the, the pandemic um, has brought some encouragement in this relationship between the university and, and the city. And I hope that's something to really build on as, as we move forward. Um, let's talk about the downtown for a minute, because as, as you know better than most, our, our poor businesses are just really um, struggling. And there's been a lot of efforts over the course of the pandemic from gift card stimulus to, um, to the adaptations we see downtown with, for outdoor dining and, and pedestrian access. And yet, as soon as that happened, we kind of had to go into a period of, of shutdown again. So what are you hearing from, from business owners? How are they faring? What are their, their hopes and fears? What comes next for them, maybe? Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I think no question, regardless of who you are, um, you know, whether it's, you know, a parent with kids doing distance learning, uh, kids themselves, uh, you know, a business owner, you know, I mean, you know, or, or, you know, involved in nonprofits, I mean, across the board, uh, you know, there is a real uh, you know, it, this has been a very stressful year, no question. And so that, and, you know, the, the issues around surrounding mental health and, and the challenges of isolation and such are, are really, and, and frankly, the cycle of, you know, open, close, open, close, and, you know, the panic are, are very, very challenging. So, um, I think that, you know, we're, there's lots of fatigue, uh, frankly, from, you know, folks all across the board, but in our community, but especially the business owners, um, you know, I think, uh, we have, uh, you know, so, some of that is out of our control as a city, of course. I mean, it's, you know, it's both, you know, the public health officials are um, making you know, recommendations and, and sort of issuing directives from either the county level, of course, or also in the, then of course, the state level. And so, you know, and some of those occasionally have been in conflict, frankly. And so it's been trying, you know, trying to have to sort through those and figure out, you know, uh, what, you um, <clears throat> sort of, you know, what, what is the most up-to-date or accurate uh, information and regulation and, you know, and that, so that's sort of consistently also, I think, a been a challenge. Um, you know, there's, I do think there's some optimism out there, certainly. I mean, it's, you know, sort of cautious optimism, right? Uh, that, that, you know, there's some businesses are, have been shuttered for most of the pandemic and are continuing to be shuttered, right? So think of movie theaters, for example. Exactly. Uh, and so, and so, of course, Davis has three <laughs> movie theaters, two separate owners, but three three movie theaters in the downtown, all of which have been shuttered for basically almost the entire part of the uh, almost the entire past year. And then, you know, but then obviously some uh, businesses, you know, grocery stores, of course, is a good example, uh, are busier than ever. <laughs> and you know, we saw these like. Uh, early on in the early days, we saw these issues around, you know, hoarding and, you know, selling, you know, bank shortages of, you know, uh, basic supplies and cleaning supplies and sanitizer and toilet paper and all those types of things. Uh, but I think that, you know, we are, uh, so it's not hitting everyone uniformly, I think is a real issue. So, you know, a lot of the businesses now that they are, now that the um, county has moved back into the purple tier and is, and you know, outdoor dining has been able to be resumed. Um, you know, there's a lot of folks out there uh, safely. I think you know, I see people safely dining outside, and 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 in Davis, I think also is um, we're very fortunate that people are adhering to the the um, directives, the health directives, and guidance around, especially mask wearing and such. Um, I think that, you know, it's funny people are, you know, when you hear see these folks that say, oh, I don't want to wear a mask or whatever, it's like. I don't necessarily really want to wear a mask either, but I'm wearing a mask to not to protect you. I mean, right. It's not, I mean, I'm yes, sure. I potentially am at risk for, um, you know, we all are contracting COVID, but I am, I'm as much wearing a mask to protect myself as I'm really out there wearing a mask to help protect other people. Right. And I think that that is something that um, unfortunately, you know, is lost uh, in sort of other aspects of our greater society. And I think that, and, you know, when, when I've traveled some of the, to several communities nearby, right? On occasion, right? I have to go pick up some, you know, pick up at being at a store somewhere else. Yeah. Um, 
let's just say Davis is <laughs> Davis is a lot more masked up than uh, yeah. many, 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 many surrounding communities. So I feel very fortunate that folks are really taking that seriously. That's been a, my experience too, in, in limited trips to other areas, whether that's woodland or a little further afield, people do not mask the way we do here. So yeah, good, good on us here in Davis. Um, but you know, the numbers countywide are, are still creeping up and, and there is a uh, hope for optimism with vaccine, but with limited numbers, we're just, you know, what I say to people every week is we're not out of this yet and it's going to be a while. So Lucas, let's talk about um, governance for a minute because you're, you're doing something different this year. You've served as an at-large um, elected member of the Davis City Council and now you represent District 3. So how, how is that different for you? Uh, well, you know, it, it's, uh, it has, I don't know if you can hear me or not, all right. I'm saying my, it's telling me my connection is a little unstable. Um, in some ways, it's you know I think the, jur the the jury is still out or the verdict is still out you know on on how district elections will sort of impact the community. Um, I yes, I represent a geographic area you know of the community, uh, sort of the central part of the city. Uh, when you look at the entire map of Davis, uh, but at the same you know sort of sort of central downtown itself, but central and then much of East Davis. And then also uh, some of, some of the northern part of the city, north uh, north um, of Covell. Right. But I think um, for me, uh, you know, I was elected eight years ago to represent the entire city, and that's how I operate. That's how I attempt to govern. I I represent this community of Davis, um, and I feel like you know I use this example during the council election sort of campaign. You know, if if somebody. Uh, you know, one of the one of the boundaries of my district is on the west side is Oak Avenue, okay? right? And if somebody on one side of Oak Avenue who's in my district has a has a problem, and somebody who's on the other side of the street on Oak Avenue has a problem, I'm not going to just listen to the people who happen to be in my you know in my district, so to speak. Right. Um, I'm going to really try to seek out to represent the people in this community. And uh, because I, that's what, how I've done it for, you know, since I've been in uh, the office in sort of uh, city council elected office so far. And I think that that, I do think that that's how most of the folks who are on the city council also approach that situation. And um, we're supposed to try to govern for uh, the entire community. And so that's how I really approach it. And I think that that, I, I assume that will be how, uh, you know, there's always an there's always a potential for parochialism and sort of, you know, you know, factions and, you know, geographic sort of representing your own little area. But I do think that by and large, people will um, try to represent the entire community. And there are things that are common to the community at large, the downtown, to go back there for a second, for example, that we all care about. And so you're not as, you know, that's that may not be in your district, but your or portions of it may not be, but you're not going to ignore it. Um, I, I did before we move away from the downtown talking about the businesses that have been shuttered for all, you know, for most of the pandemic movie theaters, uh, per performing arts venues um, and, and many others uh, hotels and, and tourism and visitors um, that has to put a, a dent in our sales tax revenue and our transient occupancy tax revenue and everything in a big way. So what kind of impacts are, uh, will the city be seeing and I know that we just finished one quarter and we'll probably really see the fallout in this next quarter but uh what, what are the hopes and fears there yeah it's interesting some uh you know so some things are so sales tax has actually not fallen as much as we thought people are still consuming you know items so and buying things you know grocery stores and other stores target as an example right and you know and ace hardware or wherever downtown you know so there's definitely a fair amount of an avid reader and others where things are taxable so that that's we're seeing a lot of uh, the sales tax really, revenue not really um, decline yet. Um, you know, obviously the <clears throat> um, yeah the the uh, hotel tax or the you know transient occupancy tax occupancy tax uh, those that's been a little underperforming certainly. But it's interesting. We right we've had uh, we have one brand new hotel uh, at you know the Marriott um, at at Second and Mace open just essentially as the pandemic was starting, um, and so you know that and then we have another hotel in south davis that is uh, the hyatt house hotel that is nearing completion so you know you've got these two i mean that's basically another um 
I mean, it's close to, I think it's close to 400 rooms total, right? Between the two hotels that are new. And so interestingly though, so the Marriott was doing not very well, right? For the first couple of months, but then they were, they started to have, they were selling a lot of rooms for essential workers. Um, and so, so there have been some sort of bright spots there that we, you know, weren't necessarily thinking about, I would say. And so, but I do think that'll rebound over time, right? The, the you know, that's, that, that's going to, and, you know, there was a r- real high demand for need for hotel rooms prior to the pandemic, especially due to the, all the sort of, um, uh, sort of business, you know, with the university and just the conferences and, you know, uh, things that people attend at the university as an example. And, in, and some of the, com- and of course, also visiting c- the companies here in town, but there's been a few bright spots as well. It's interesting, you know, in terms of some of the the revenue that comes in for the city. Um, this is was kind of an un, you know, surprising one, but uh, the cannabis revenue <laughs> has been, uh, we'll just say, quite strong. Uh, <laughs> the taxes from the dispensaries, uh, both the bricks and mortar dispensaries, the delivery services, um, has been very <laughs> exceeded expectations during the during the course of the pandemic. So, um, you know, there are uh, and which was something we were not anticipating. So um, there's definitely though, you know, I think the other potential issue out there is that uh, in this, with this change in uh, federal administrations, uh, we're going to see, uh, a, I think, a commi- uh, you know, a commitment to, um, uh, we're hearing from DC and from the White House that there is a commitment to help um, send some relief to a lot of individuals have had the relief sent in businesses through the Paycheck Protection Program and such, but that local governments and state governments are going to also be in line for um, seeing some uh, sort of relief money for from the pandemic. And so, you know, we'll see if that happens. But I can also say to you that all uh, there's not a local government out there. We'll say uh, probably anywhere in the country, but certainly not in California that isn't having some sort of um, adverse effects from from this situation. So Davis is, you know, we are not alone in that. Sure. But it is glad to hear that there's a little hope on the horizon. And this is why I ask those questions, because I don't have the inside knowledge that you have. <laughs> so um, we have about four or five minutes left. And before we run out of time, we've, we've talked about some of the success stories and some of the, the better than hope for uh, outcomes, maybe that we're, we're looking at through this. W- what are you hearing from uh, what, what's weighing heavy on the, on the hearts and minds of, uh, of Davis voters? You know, when I, when I read the local news, I, uh, I read about mace, I read about crime and I read about um, police accountability. And so, you know, what, what are you hearing from voters and what do we need to know that to be looking at for the next couple of months ahead? Sure. Yeah. Um, I think a couple of things. I think firstly, um, uh, you know, there are still a few sort of next steps uh, that are unresolved in some of these items. So, you know, so Mace Boulevard is a good example. You know, we've been uh, in South Davis specifically, you know, we, there's still some, uh, the last city council, you know, I mean, sort of last year, basically, you know, in the earlier part of, la- of 2020 basically said, you know, there are still some, uh, you know, tweaks and changes that need to occur there. So no question. So the, the real issue is just working with the county uh, and, you know, and then getting the sort of changes put in place over the course of this next year. Um, <clears throat> and we've got, uh, I'm on a subcommittee with Josh Chapman, who's the new council member for elected from South Davis. And sure. we, we've got a meeting coming up with um, Supervisor Provenza. And so, you know, just getting ready to make sure that that um, uh, sort of the next steps occur there. Um, you know, I think that that, you know, there, uh, you know, <laughs> there, I don't think that, you know, there's some folks who want it to go back to the way it was, you know, f- you know, uh, for 40 years. And there's others, many others who also say, we actually enjoy having the ability to have send our kids safely to go, you know, go to school when schools sat, you know, are open, of course, yeah. but, you know, we've, we've, we see the usage there. So, I mean, there's some, there's a happy medium to be uh, struck, I think. Um, and then, uh, you know, interestingly, a few other quick things. Yeah, we've heard, obviously, we're hearing some concerns about crime, you know, increases in crime around town. I would say if, you know, Davis, the, the, the crimes in Davis historically, and basically now are crimes of opportunity. That is what, we, that is really how I, I'm, you know, not making excuses for the, the crimes occur. But, you know, it's a lot of it is like the catalytic converter thefts we're hearing, yeah. right? Or, or, you know, or bike thefts, things like that. Um, you know, uh, package the, you know, packages being taken, these porch pirate sort of situations, um, you know, that that has 
long been a situation where, you know, there's, there's a real need for folks to um, take a sort of common sense approach to, uh, you know, uh, it's, if you see something and, you know, that's, you know, out of the ordinary, definitely sort of speak up about it, you know, but also I think that there's, you know, these issues around like the, um, the package thefts, uh, you know, we, people, <laughs> I mean, people, pe there, and there are more people at home these days too. That's the other yeah. thing. So there are more eyes and ears out in the neighborhoods, right. As opposed to when they're gone, but you know, it's, it's these crimes of convenience. That is really what it is. People, uh, there are a lot of folks will come from out of town, uh, come up, come off the freeway, uh, you know, drive through a neighborhood, sort of cherry picking going, you know, in the catalytic converter thefts issues, it's primarily, uh, you know, Priuses, older model Priuses that are targeted, some trucks and things like that too. Um, but we are, you know, and we just are going to be announcing, we just found out, you know, just, there was literally just a, um, a, a a catalytic converter thief out there that was caught this morning at about 5 a.m. Um, so, you know, and uh, so I think it's, you know, that's an example of where there are, there are concerns. I mean, no question, but I also think that, um, you know, we have been working on um, hiring of new officers and, and sort of new, especially uh, folks who are um, unarmed and who are out there to help mental health workers and such to help with our unhoused population. So, you know, those are some things that are on the horizon. Um, and I, we know that they're definitely, they mean, or, you know, our, there are people are really, um, uh, are, you know, having concerns about some of these items. So we're working to address them. Great. Thank you for that. And uh, I know, I know constituents contact you, but I want to remind everyone, if you go to cityofdavis.org, there is a link on the front page for city council, and you can easily email council members right from there. There's also uh, agendas and archive meetings and all of that good stuff. So um, this has been the COVID-19 Community Report for January 26, 2021. And I've been speaking with Davis's Vice Mayor, Lucas Frerichs. Lucas, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, this has been pre-recorded on Zoom during quarantine. And I hope to be back in the KDRT studio very soon. Oh, thank you so much, Autumn. Really appreciate it. All right. Take care. And I'll see you next week, folks.